Hey guys, what's up? We're back with another wine video. Today, I'm just excited to drink with you guys because in today's video, there's no astrology, there's no blind wine tasting, and I'm just really here to document my drinking. <laughs> I'm trying out these three white wines today from South Africa. I feel like that South Africa does not get a lot of the spotlight, even though it's a highly reliable producer of wine in the world. I honestly don't know why that is. And South Africa definitely has to be on your bucket list of top wine destinations. I want to go there sometime. After all this pandemic is through, will we ever really get out of it? Let's just drink the South Africans wine today and imagine like we are on that trip again. Alright, so let's get this started. The first thing that you would notice about these South African wines is that they have a uniform labeling on them. At the back or the side, there's always this phrase that says WO. So WO represents wine origin. Having the WO there does not really equate the DOCG, the IGP, the IGT of Europe, but it's a step towards the right direction. As South Africa really tries to position itself as not only a source of great value wine, but actually top quality wine that can compete with the best of them from the rest of the world. They also have this integrity and sustainability seal. We're going to be trying out three white wines. So we'll be starting with a Sauvignon Blanc, moving on to a Chardonnay, ending our tasting with a Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc has really found a home in South Africa and it's almost synonymous to how you would have Malbec represent Argentina. So this grape variety just really found a home there. And so for our first wine, this is from, from the wine producer Louis Nell. This is Brandis as Laika. Wine origin, Brie de Clouf. <laughs> I'm not sure if I said it right, Brie de Clouf. If you watch my video on Beginner's Guide to Buying Wine 2, the sequel. Remember that I mentioned there that the more specific that a wine is in its point of origin, that it would tend to be better. Okay, let's try this Sauvignon Blanc out. It's traditionally light gold as would be for some Blancs. This is showing more color than usual. It has a tinge more gold than what I would expect from a Sauv Blanc. On the nose, it has the tartness that's common to Sauv Blanc. But I feel like it's a little more gentle. It's not as aggressively acidic as Sauv Blanc is from New Zealand or Chile for that matter. As is typical with Sauvignon Blanc, it, it's really hard to mistake it for anything else. But this one does not have the same grapefruit or guava or passion fruit that other popular Sauvignon Blancs have. It's more towards like a pear apple type of uh, taste. And so Riddicluf is, is actually, it's more inland than other neighboring wine regions. It is actually situated near a valley. It's interesting because yes, it's, it's sort of protected from the elements. These grapes are grown near a river. The soil is said to be growing from a previous riverbed. Um, tends to have a lot of clean water, mildly grown grapes, and I think it's showing itself uh, because of the mild flavors that this sub block also has. So stay tuned to the end of the video to see how, how I rate it and how much it actually costs me. Alright, so moving on. This is the Chardonnay from Table Mountain. If you see this Chardonnay from Table Mountain and the previous Sauv Blanc are actually quite similar in color, which usually isn't the case. So this wine is listed as coming from Western Cape. All of these are actually Western Cape. Um, the only difference is that the Sauv Blanc is from a sub-region. Again, Riddicluf. And the next one, it's from Cape Town. But not just Cape Town, it's from Durbanville. But this one, unfortunately, this Table Mountain, following my tips from last time, it only says Western Cape. My point is it's not too particular, so I have less expectations about this wine. Aww. And yes, let's go in. Moving from a Sauv Blanc to a Chardonnay, a Chardonnay would be more buttery, a little fuller experience. It, it doesn't have the same tartness. That's alright, I guess. The good thing about this is there are many wine drinkers who are critics of overly oak Chardonnay. And this one, I can't really taste the buttery popcorn that Chardonnay usually has. So at least in that sense, it's tried to remain itself and not really over oak it. It's a little juicy, to be honest. It's a little flat. It's not the worst thing, but it's, it's a regular uh, table wine. And yeah, that's why it's called table content. <laughs> And la 
lastly, we move on to the price tasting of today's session. We have here a Chenin Blanc from Durbanville Hills. So the interesting thing about Durbanville is if it's actually situated near the Atlantic Ocean. It's a wine region that's almost coastal. But Urbanville Hills, it's more than 250 meters above sea level. So these are in high mountains. These grapes are grown in a region that has sea breeze coming in. So there's a little saltiness. But also it's growing in a relatively colder climate. How that translates, I'm not really sure. I think it would tend to be more gentle, but because of the proximity to the ocean, there's a bit of a mix there of its flavor. So I wouldn't expect it to be more interesting. Interestingly enough, on the business side, Durbanville Hills is actually a coming together of different wine growers. It's actually a cooperative. So this is this region really coming together and putting their, their town on the map, so to speak. <laughs> Ooh, this is different. It has a little bit of a burnt creme brulee <laughs> scent. Um, not that, that I expect it to be sweet. It's like violet crumble, honeycomb candy. The colors of these wines are actually quite similar. Good thing I didn't do a blind taste. <laughs> I might not have been able to tell. Let's go in. That's good. That's really good. It's more of that bitter taste of caramel as an aftertaste rather than the sweet side. What I can really taste here, it has high salinity. It actually tastes quite salty. And I like that. I like that it has a good mix of bitter, salty, and burnt sugar aftertaste, and I think that makes for a great character. By far, that is the best one. So let's rate these wines. The Luina Laika. I would give this a 7.5 out of 10 from Santi's Delicatessen. You'd be glad to know that this is under 350 pesos, so it's pretty good value. Number two actually comes in a two pack, but to buy one, take one that you have to buy for a little under 600 pesos it's from SNR. If you're not a member, you can use the Pickaroo app. I'll share you my link below for 250 pesos off as long as you use my code MARK7188. I would rate this wine probably a 7.2. And lastly, the Chenin Blanc, I would give this an 8.4. This has honestly made me curious about Chenin Blancs. You know, you come across white and you get more curious about the varietal. So I've tasted some before, but no, nothing really stood out. But sometimes it only takes one and then you start, you know, really appreciating uh, that varietal. I got this from thirst.ph. I'll share a link below as well. Under 400 pesos. To get it at that price, you would have to buy it at the four pack. So what do you think guys? Have you tried wines from South Africa? Do you think that they're getting overlooked by a little bit? And how was your South African wine experience? So if you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and cheers! Chenin Blanc!